Hello, hello. Uh, this is Reese coming to you for a down and dirty review of Movie Men by Jeremy Lott and Doug Curtis. I uh, picked this up off of their crowdfund, um, and they got mailed to me, I guess, about a month ago. Um, end of September, I picked. They, they get, arrived at my door, and I'm very excited. Very excited about that. Um, it came with a with a movie stub style um, bookmark, but I'm actually using that in a uh, another book right now. Believe it or not, um, it's very, <laughs> it turned out to be very useful. Anyway, um, but before I get into talking about movie men, I actually want to go back in in time and talk about my first superhero book ever, which is. This issue of Batman, uh, number 495, um, uh, it's, it's a Batman story written by Alan Grant, with art by Norm Brayfogle and inks by Steve Mitchell. And the reason I want to talk about this is this is, like I said, this is the comic that got me into comics. This hooked me. Um, and part of it's the story, and I'm not going to do a review of the story, but a big part of it is, is Brayfogle and Mitchell's art, and those dynamic use of, of lines, the really action kind of sets it off. And uh, Bray Fogel's art um, was just so meaningful to me as I was... And also, this, this Batmobile is simply the coolest. But the, the use of, of line art just hit me in a way that I'd never, I'd never seen before. And I just really... Just look at the Batman's cape right there. And these just the way the, the black space is used. The lines that indicate the whole building. It just was phenomenal. Um, and that was one of those things where, for me... Um, I just, I just, this, this was in like the radiant from the impact there, um, and just all that kind of stuff. It, it hit me in a way I'd never really seen before, and so um, <clears throat> the reason I bring that up um, is one because that was so f- uh, fundamental for me to start digging on comics. Um, it also happens in a theater. It's tangential, actually. It is ironic though, in some ways, um, but it was so fundamental to me. Um, that um, I just want to talk about that that line work because when um, I first interviewed Jeremy Lott before they launched Movie Men, just before, and he showed me some of the art for it, it was just as they launched. I'm trying to remember that back then. But anyway, as they saw the art for it, um, and Curtis has a very similar line usage, and it just it really reminded me, really took me back to. Um, I um, mean, just like take a look at this page. It just took me back to to to, to Bray Fogel and Mitchell, and it just made me. Um, I became so um, enamored by it. I said, I have to have this um, because that just that just was. It just struck that chord um, right in the pit of me. Um, and in fact, this this page here was one of the ones that I'd seen this originally thing from. So a little bit about Movie Men, um, and let me move this Batman picture out the way here. Whoop. Over to the side. Okay. So one of the things about this one specifically, the plot is that um, these folks, they all, they're all they all clerks or uh, um, stewards, I guess they call them. Maybe that's not the right term. Um, but at the at a movie theater. Pages? It doesn't matter. They all work there. They, they, they sell popcorn. Um, they, you know, make sure the, the, the exits are safe, all that kind of stuff. Um, and... Uh, Somebody sets off some sort of bomb that pulls the monsters off the screen. And in fact, um, we'll go ahead and look at that page here quick. Um, here is... Um, and I, 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 I am not great at remembering everyone's names. That is the one thing about this. I will talk a little bit of story first, and I'll talk a little bit of, of the issues I had with it. But this this fellow right here, um, he's, he uh, sees bomb, he yells bomb, and the bomb goes off. And then, oh my goodness, look at this, there's no dinosaur on the screen when they were watching not Jurassic Park, right? Um, so then they have to um, uh, go after the monsters, or they decide to go after the monsters, or they happen to go after the monsters, and um, with that, um, they suddenly have weapons that appear um, from the different movies that give them the, the leg up on all of that. And, um, they, uh, and then just wackiness and action ensues, right? And that's just sort of that they, they strike down the monsters and they return to the th- movies where they're at, and uh, that's just one of the uh, one of the fun bits in the movie thing. And it's it's a very action story. Um, there are five characters. Um, it's the good things about it: a lot of great action, um, a lot of natural comedy. Uh, it's not it's not forced. Doesn't seem fake at all. 
Um, all of the characters, the, the five uh, characters, are very distinct in their personalities, even though I, I have a hard time remembering everyone's names. And part of that was, is I really wanted to see uh, a little more of them. Um, but the uh, the action seems realistic um, for the, the crazy scenario they're in. Um, I, I love Curtis's art. There's a couple places where his faces look a little a little um, off model. Um, and I, that maybe that's just because um, I'm not totally used to his style. But I love his line work and his inks. Um, and the, the way he uses line weight and everything. Just it, It's so awesome. Um, the, uh, the, the one thing is it's, it's just 20 pages, um, and so, um, and a lot of this is just basically setting up the scenario, right? Um, but it's only 20 pages, and, you know, a normal, um, uh, a mainstream comic is between 18 and, um, 24 pages with ads. They all used to be 24, and they started getting padded out in the 90s, right? Um, but with that, so it's within the size of a normal comic, but... The, the downside of that is that um, we don't really get a lot of time with each of the characters. And even though Jeremy does a really good job of writing them with different voices, so they feel like they're different people, um, we, we don't qu- I didn't feel like we quite got enough of an introduction to, to get to know them in a way that branded them into my mind. So I'm like, oh yeah, that's Brad, that's Casey, and I, I don't even remember if, if there is a Casey, right? Um, so that's, the, that's, that's part of the situation with that. So, um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a fun romp, and I cannot wait to see what else Jeremy has for us, um, in the world of movie men. I know he's talked about that he's not a big fan of the shared universes, so that his, uh, his next, um, uh, story may not be connected to movie men, and movie men's not going to connect to the other stuff, um, but I am really excited, um, they're having a team up with Sporkman at some point in the future, and, uh, the, 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 the Spork guys are are, uh, are good friends of mine. Maybe not good, good acquaintances. But I'm very looking very forward to seeing, seeing more of what they have to have. And I definitely um, am excited to see more of, uh, of the work from, from Doug Curtis. Um, and like I said, there, there may be in a couple things were just, you know, maybe a little weird. Um, like this dude's face right here doesn't seem to look like the same face as is back here, but, um, even with that, it was, uh, very enjoyable, and I just, I really like, like this, this story, and it's fun, I just wish it was a little longer, four more pages, a little more time for the characters to shine, I think would have been just perfect, um, as far as introduction, because I felt this is just not quite introduced fully, um, but I am looking forward to seeing more of it, and a great job on the book, guys, okay, well, that's it for me, um, on, on Movie Men, talking about that, and uh, yeah, keep out there reading comics, guys.